Howdy, Cynthia Harrison here. And I've just finished something that I would call an unreasonable dream. And having a cup of tea to celebrate. I thought I'd just pop in. <laughs> because I've been talking about this unreasonable dream for a while and I haven't been saying what the dream is or was. And uh, basically what an unreasonable dream is, it's where you reach forward. Hey, sis. <laughs> it's where you reach forward beyond what you think is actually possible what other people will say oh, you can't do that or that's unreasonable how can you possibly think or believe or know that you could be that or do that hence the unreasonable dream this is how i live my life i i'm challenging and stretching myself constantly to that place where I'm shaking in my boots <laughs> you know you get a little bit shaky you can feel the energy around you shaking but that's a good thing because it means that there is growth happening there's growth on its way whether you whether you fall or not and I've, I've trained myself in a way to reach out for these unreasonable dreams with the knowing that I can break fall forward is a martial arts term. I can fall forward. So if I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall forwards anyway and I'm, I'm still making uh, movement in the direction that I'm uh, being pulled at that point in time. I hope that makes sense. So I just finished an interview. Um, that was my unreasonable dream. My unreasonable dream was to be a speaker. Now, <laughs> those of you that know me recently might go, oh, yeah. But those of you that have known me for many years know that I struggle with speaking. I struggle with the way that I speak, um, with keeping things linearly and in time and all of these things and the umming and ahhing and whatnot. I didn't let it stop me. I just kept reaching forward for the next unreasonable dream and each one gives me more stretch. Each one gives me more experience. Each one lets me know uh, where I may have more skill than other areas, right? Each one brings me the polarity of this world, the north, the south, the positive, the negative. When we can stay in the centre of that polarity it doesn't matter what happens around us okay so I suppose I've come on just to share and say is there something that you want that seems beyond your reach so far beyond your reach okay but if your heart, if it, if your heart sings for it, if you have a desire, a soul passion for it, make the steps, one step, one step, one step, one step. If you trip and fall, practice falling forward so you're still making ground, okay? Practice falling forwards if you're going to fall at all.
So I placed years ago, I placed that I wanted to do summits and seminars. And I reached forward. And those of you that follow know that I've been doing a couple of summits a year or series or retreats and hosting those. And then I thought, I would love to actually step out and get the information that I'm here to share out to more people. How can I do that? How can I get my information, my um, uh, medicine, my gift to the world? We all have our own medicine. We all have our own gifts. They're all individual. How can I get mine out? I could write a book. Yeah, I've tried that. I've, I've got numerous books in the making. It's just not my thing. I, you know, I still stretch and stretch. So maybe that will be and my next unreasonable dream, right, to finish a book. But how can I share with the, a great number of people? And it would be by doing speaking engagements. How do you get invited to those? Okay. Because even to be on mine, um, some of mine, you needed to have a following of a certain amount. Um, some of mine I changed because of that to give people the opportunity that didn't have a following and didn't have an email list and didn't have an Instagram account and a Facebook following and all of that to be able to get their work and get their medicine out. So the Inspired Life, that series, um, it's an ongoing series. We're having a break right now. But that uh, series is an opportunity for people to reach their unreasonable dream if, if they have something that they want to share with the world. So in August, I was invited to submit to the shift, which is the energy medicine and healing summit. And I nearly fell off my chair. I was sitting down. I was talking to Dondi, who's the host. And she invited me. And um, my proposal was accepted. And today, just half an hour ago, I did the interview. So I'm here fresh off the back end of that interview where I was sharing about subliminal stress, where I was sharing about uh, how we can empower our health and wellness, how we can take charge and directorship of our lives when we feel like we have no control and no uh, say or power over what's happening around us. Subliminal stress uh, creates a stress response in the nervous system that is almost undetectable until it's symptoms start. Now, we went into, I won't go right into it because that's what the uh, series is about, but we spoke about, you know, electromagnetic energies. We spoke about um, electro pollutants, technology, 5G, uh, all the new technologies that are adding to our soup that we move through <laughs> the field and how on earth can we stay earthed and centered and well within that and so I shared uh, techniques tools and techniques that you can do to be able to take control of your own health and wellness now I'm passionate about that this isn't about me, it's about the work. So the unreasonable dream is to get the work out. The unreasonable dream is to share with as many people as possible ways to impact and affect your own health and wellness for vitality, not for survival, right? We don't wanna just survive anymore, we wanna thrive, we wanna be vital, we wanna have wellness in every level of our being. We want to evolve our systems as the earth is evolving, as the technologies are evolving. We're not going to be able to stop the progress of what was already here, the um, 
the extremely low frequencies, the EMFs, um, the microwaves, you know, uh, the electromagnetic uh, information flying around us. The invisible information is subliminal stress. It impacts your nervous system in different ways. Ultimately, when we have the introduction of the pole shifts, so the, uh, the shifts in the magnetic field of the earth, then for the human to be able to earth, like every electrical appliance needs to be earthed, so does the human. If we can't earth because our polarity is uh, trying to dance with the Earth's polarity, so the Earth's magnetic field, so if the Earth layer of the Earth is north and our feet are south, you know, then we can have a good connection. But if the polarity is flipped, it repels us and we're not able to Earth. If we're not able to Earth, it pr brings in another stress response. So we're getting um, these layers of stressors that impact our health. So it's all about health and wellness. How can we empower ourselves and our families to be able to live well, to be able to live well and have health and vitality and joy. If we can't get that earthing, that uh, life force energy into us, which creates that vitality, that essence, it's called, it's, it's fuel, then we'll have ailments, we'll have um, inflammation, we will have, you know, 98%, it's probably more now, um, disorders, disease is created from stress. So we talked about that. <laughs> I didn't talk a lot about uh, the polarity of the earth shifting. We didn't have time. Um, so I think I'll go into that another time. But suffice to say, today I reached an unreasonable dream for myself, which was to be able to share this information with hundreds of thousands of people rather than just, you know, a thousand odd. So at this point, regardless of how it shows up and how it is produced, I did it. <laughs> I'm not worried about what it looks like and what I said. I know that I got the key points across. Unreasonable dream for uh, November 16, tick. Now, what's my next unreasonable dream? What's your next unreasonable dream? What's your, what, you, what are you um, reaching out for that you can, uh, I call it a dream because it's like, what our mind, the human mind can conjure up is only an aspect of what we will be able to actually have. So an unreasonable dream is getting you out of that to vision past what you think is possible. So my next unreasonable dream, I'm already, well, it's not really an unreasonable dream um, because the more that you, that come about and that you see coming into your field materializing you realize ah anything's possible what i'm passionate about is research i want to put a lot of these um i want to put a lot of these energy techniques and tools to help those that are really struggling with things like post-traumatic stress um, I've had post-traumatic stress myself and general anxiety disorder. I am, let's just say, cured <laughs> from these types of techniques without medications and whatnot. Some people need to be supported by um, 
you know, their medical practitioners and psychologists, psychiatrists and whatnot. The tools that I bring in to work with that offer, again, the empowerment of taking your health and wellness into your own hands and being able to evolve your system. When I say evolve your system, physiologically it's your nervous system to regulate when we have trauma or a lot of stress our nervous system is not regulating our center so to speak which creates difficulties in every aspect of life from my experience it prevented me from speaking so you can see why my unreasonable dream to be in front of people and to speak and just be who I am when you have a general anxiety disorder you can't even speak to one person without sweating and wanting to vomit and having you know uh, looping thoughts for days afterwards about how all that was okay so those of you that have anxiety or have experienced anxiety know what I'm talking about so uh, an unreasonable dream was to not have any of that I reached that our next unreasonable dream was to start speaking to start sharing to start being who you are or who I am without worrying about what people said or didn't say whether they liked me didn't like me or whatever because it's about the work it's about the work okay so I am looking at doing some uh, research or some groups. Maybe uh, I'm looking at possibly um, working with some uh, veterans to start with some or return service men and women to assist their recovery and their nervous system recovery from, uh, you know, uh, their stress and how they may have experienced the world I've worked with mental health a lot in the past uh, people experiencing schizophrenia and bipolar and whatnot uh, these techniques have worked uh, extremely well to give them enough stability to not want to kill themselves to want to stay here you see the difference between surviving and thriving the, this was about surviving so there's different levels there's people that are still struggling to survive, to stay here. So many, and you might know them. There's so many. I hear about it near daily of people wanting to leave, i.e. suicide, right? They can't see a way out. They cannot regulate the dreams, the flashbacks, the, um, the energetic feeling, the physiological feelings that disrupt their lives. It's tough. These uh, tools and techniques help. They help you. They assist. Slowly but surely. There is no quick fix. It took me four years. Four years every single day of doing the work. Okay. It may not take you so long. <laughs> um, but I'm well and I'm vibrant. Okay, so I suppose I'm just saying for people who are struggling that there's help and there's things that you can do, but it's not a quick fix. That's the thing. Our nervous system and the way that our patterns of behavior are wired in the brain and in our, you know, the rest of the nervous system, it takes time to repattern that, but we can repattern it. That's been my job for near 20 years now in different avenues is to repattern our behavior I may I may label it differently I might talk about some woo woo out there stuff right but there's different levels of understanding there's a real physical down-to-earth everyday living how we can regulate uh, when I say regulate get these effects of the stressors whether they're seen or unseen whether they're here now or from the past 
uh, worked through and sedated, so to speak, calmed. So anyway, <laughs> that's what I wanted to share. I'm on a mission, you can tell, can't you? So I am going to do, be doing much more work with trauma. I moved away from it for a while because that's what I did for so long. And uh, some of that work actually, uh, secondary and tertiary, traumatized me. So I had to work through my stuff enough. I had to be well enough to be able to come back and share what I share my wisdom, share what I've learnt, what I experienced, but also what other people are experiencing and um, new research and whatnot. So that's coming up. It's not really an unreasonable dream because I can see that that's already here. I'm already working on it. The next unreasonable dream would be uh, something I've got to write a proposal for. Um, so <laughs> you see how it works? You meet your dream, you do it. It's no longer a dream, it's reality. And then you go, all right, what's next? What, what is so far out there that really it's got to be a dream to, to materialise really, you know? So um, I don't know who's there. If anyone's there, maybe you could share what, what's something that you might want to reach out to and make the stretch for now know that it's not going to happen like overnight uh, but the more that you do it what I found is when you have it's like you've got to believe until you know and so I don't know if that makes sense but it's like I say to my students that you know um Sometimes you can believe in your teacher until you have the experiences yourself and then you know you have your own knowing, your own wisdom, your own experience, so then you can share that. But until you do have that, it's like um, you, you've got to put that, that negativity or that want of not knowing aside a little bit, put the mind aside, be out of the mind so that you can feel and move your way through to know, believe, then know that if you put your dream, so this is the difference, this is how I do it, because it's different to what, how most people would share and say. And it's to do with polarity, because if you have a vision board, for instance, and you are constantly putting energy towards it, in my experience, it pushed the it pushed what it was away from me, like the um, reverse polarity of of a magnet. So you know, you have um, uh, so north attracts south, and if you flip it and have south south, it repels. And that's what I found. What I needed to do was place it and forget it. Place it. So it might be, I can remember one of mine was to go to Paris to paint. I did that. <laughs> like I, I, every dream that I put out there, I, I hit and I'm like, well, okay, I've got to make them bigger. I've got to keep making them bigger so that, you know, because it starts to happen. It doesn't mean, you know, my, my dreams usually experiences. It's not about stuff. I dream about experiencing as much of the world as I can, you know, as many experiences as I can. So place it, write it down, stick it away, you know, stick it under your bed or under your pillow, forget about it. Come back maybe so often, you know, you can have many. I used to start with pages. I just write everything that I wanted to experience in life, which was, all the things I've done so far, you know, and all the travel that I've done and all the people that I've met and experiences, you know. I asked for more uh, more colleagues in my life, so more people that I could talk to about the weird and wonderful stuff that, um, you know, not, not so much being the teacher all the time or, or sharing, you know, but having other people that you can discuss these with and bam, all these people started to come in. So... Make placement. 
if you're flowing through life, that's okay. There's no judgment where you are is where you are. But I'm about empowerment and taking directorship of your life. So if you're flowing with the stream, so a lot of uh, spiritual teachers and whatnot will say go with the flow. I used to say that myself. But now I say go with the flow but holding the oars. So you're in the boat in the water and you're steering it. You're telling it where you want to go. Right? You're not fully controlling it. You're saying unreasonable dream, for instance. I want to go there. Right? Plant it. You're in the boat. You've got your oars. And if you start hitting the sides of the river, you can steer it. So it's not like a hard and fast, like boom. It's a gentle placement with intention, knowing that it already is. And the key, this is the key, that when you do or want for anything, the, it, it, it cannot manifest without the feel that it's already here. And that's what most people miss. And it goes back to stress because if you can't feel, you go numb. You can numb out when you, or dissociate and whatnot, when you're stressed. So when you get that out of the way, then you can start really making your life happen because you place, make the placement, you feel it like it's already happened because it has, because everything exists right now. Everything is already here. The only thing stopping you from experiencing it or seeing it is the veils that you've placed there yourself. So it might be a little out there for some people, but, <laughs> but know that if you make your placement, feel it. So if you want a, a, a beloved, if you want um, a partner, make that placement. Feel the love as if it's all that person's already there. You might not even know what they look like or anything, but just feel that you have a beloved one. Feel it like it's already here. Because when you are, it's like when you are aligned to what you are, that's where it all happens. You can't align unless you've got yourself regulated enough to be able to uh, get to a place where you can feel outside of the looping thoughts and your internal um, your internal voices the critic I call them the one telling you you're not good enough the one telling you that there's no way you can do that because you're just this that or the other you need to get those out of the way so the tools and technique the energy medicine is what gets that out of the way to manifest the unreasonable dream is where you make the placement and then you can feel it. It has to be felt. And what you're doing is you're bringing the brain and the heart together. The two is actually the three minds, but um, the will, love and wisdom. So the navel, the heart and the head are the three. But for now... You just feel it. So anyway, I've gone off on a tangent. I just wanted to say howdy and um, think about your unreasonable dreams and share them with me and, uh, and I'll, share, I'll share mine that are coming up. Um, and you can do it privately. Share privately if you don't want to do publicly. Uh, and if you have any questions about how to do it or what might be stopping you or what's coming up for you um, just let me know and to finish off if there aren't any questions here uh, so December if you wanted to book a consult so if you want a energy medicine session or a consult around what's happening for you uh, if you want me to track that energy or what's going on with you physically or energetically, um, you know, whether it's 
more physical based you want to work that way that's fine uh, it's about looking for the core issue not the symptom the symptoms are the language of the core so we can look at the symptom and, and follow it back but I work with the core where did it start what's going on you clear that core that center your symptoms start to disappear so it's not peripheral work so I have uh, yeah December bookings available I'll be away in January so if you want to get in before then um, let me know send me a message and I will be back Monday and Sunday for the Intuitive Energy Medicine Power Reading Facebook Lives and uh, on Sunday uh, the Mystic Musing through the Blue Star Mystery School um, and they're free. Uh, what else? That's about it. Just want to say howdy and share an unreasonable dream and how you might uh, go about stretching, <laughs> stretching. There's no birth without the stretch. So you get a stretch. And stretching doesn't feel comfortable. If you are comfortable, there's no growth. So you can grow and then have a rest then know to get to the next level, you've got to stretch again. You've got to stretch and reach for the next level if that's what your path is, if that's what your goal is, if that's what you want in life. I don't have an end goal because I'm in causation, right? But that's about experience, 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 experience. So causation, not the end result. So all of these unreasonable dreams are just part of the wave. And if I go off track, I use my oars and I direct again. This is where I'm going. And these are the experiences I want along the way. All right, I think I'll go now. I don't think there's uh, any questions. So much love to you all. Hope some of that was helpful. Uh, if you want to have a chat about any of it, um, book in a, a time or just send me a message here or on um, Roma Ceiling Arts Facebook and we can have a chat or I can answer your questions. All right, much love to you all.